about half of American adults, around 117 million people, have one or more preventable chronic diseases. Seven out of 10 of those chronic diseases are influenced favorably by physical activity. Yet 80% of American adults are not meeting the guidelines set out by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. This lack of physical activity is linked to uh, $117 billion of annual health care costs per year and 10% of premature mortality. There are a few basic principles that can be followed to ensure that you prevent disease and live a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to focus on those areas that have worked best for me and have helped others. Those are arguably, those areas are arguably the building blocks of fitness and they include nutrition, cardiovascular training, and strength training. I'm going to begin by talking about cardiovascular training now that I've told you a general idea of what the building blocks are. And I'm going to start with nutrition. Nutrition is the process of getting nourishment through foods and nutrients and allowing them, uh, utilizing them in your body to grow, build, and maintain and repair uh, tissue. Nutrition is going to involve consuming foods from two main groups, and those are going to be macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients, meaning big, those are going to be your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates. And they're going to require a daily amount of several grams, usually. Your micronutrients, on the other hand, are going to be required in smaller amounts, and those are your vitamins and your minerals, usually less than one gram. It is important to choose the proper nutrients for uh, your diet and avoid those that are going to be harmful for you and lead to disease. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services identify core elements that your diet should include, and those are protein from lean meats, from poultry, eggs, and seafood, and nuts or, and beans. Complex carbohydrates, we're gonna be primarily from vegetables of all ty types, fruits and grains, and dairy, including low fat yogurt and milk. Unsaturated fats uh, is the last one that we're gonna recommend from vegetable oil, seafood, and nuts as well. Foods that you should limit or avoid are gonna include your uh, saturated fats and added sugars, as well as limit alcohol and sodium intake. Now that I've talked to you a little bit about nutrition, we're gonna move on to cardiovascular training. Cardiovascular training, AKA cardio, is vital for your ability to endure during extended periods of activity. Cardiovascular training, also known as aerobic activity, aerobic means with oxygen. So using this type of training is gonna allow your body to take in more oxygen and use that oxygen effectively during your workouts. If you've ever experienced a shortness of breath when walking up a flight of stairs, that gives you an idea of what a lack of aerobic training uh, can do for you negatively. Examples of aerobic activity are gonna include running, walking, riding a bike, or swimming. Incorporating these forms of activity on a regular basis have been proven to reduce risk factors associated with heart disease. The Department of Human Services has identified that less than 31% of American adults between the ages of 18 and 64 engage in moderate activity in their leisure time. To improve the statistics, they recommend that adults do between three to five hours of moderate physical activity per week or one to three hours of vigorous activity per week. And that's cardio. There's evidence to suggest that meeting these physical activities guidelines can reduce anxiety and stress, reduce the risk of cancer, improve cognitive ability, uh, and reduce and increase your burn rate as far as calories are concerned. Now that we've talked about cardiovascular training, let's talk about strength training. Including strength training into your routine is vital to prevent muscle loss and support your daily activities without physical limitations. According to the Science of Strength Training by Kern and Lewis, at the age of 40, or after the age of 40, you lose approximately three to 5% of your muscle mass every decade. To combat this loss, you want to uh, involve, in, involve yourself with consistent strength training and take in an adequate amount of proteins. Introducing stress, tension, and damage to the fibers in your muscles is gonna allow a chemical and a biological response, ultimately leading to muscle hypertrophy, also known as muscle growth. Alternatively, the lack of strength training can lead to the opposite, which is muscle atrophy, or the strengthening of your muscle tissue. So how exactly do you build muscle? 
researchers from the Arizona State University found that uh, a theory of progressive overload, uh, it suggests progressive overload. All that means is that when you subject your muscles to a heavier and heavier loads, your muscles must adapt and they will grow. This can be accomplished through several different means. Probably most familiar to you is uh, strength training through the gym, lifting weights. You also have TRX resistance band training and calisthenic exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, and squats. Now that I've covered the three building blocks of fitness, let's just do a quick review. Scientific evidence and research has suggested, indicated that maintaining proper nutrition in accordance with the Department of Health, Health and Human Services guidelines, uh, participating in physical activity, including cardio and strength training, can ultimately lead to a long, healthy life and reduce the risk of disease. Fitness doesn't require you to be a bodybuilder or a professional athlete or a power lifter. All it takes is a few hours per week of physical activity and meeting those guidelines by the Department of Health and Human Services and an awareness of the things that you are putting in your body each day.